All right. So, there that is. Now, the other thing you could do is, um, after this dries, to go over it with some more stuff. In fact, I'm going to just take, I'm going to put this, I still have ink here on the paper, which is, I don't waste ink. Throw a little more down there. And let's take a little more of that iridescent. That was the cranberry, or no, watermelon. The iridescent nickel. The nickel stuff is just incredibly gorgeous. Okay. So, let's close this up again. And give it just the slightest bit of a roll. No reason why you can't move it with your finger. Okay. All right. So, here's another idea. Now, these rollers, these are wallpaper seam rollers, and I use that sticky back tape. I mean, I'm sorry, the sticky back craft foam to cut out and just stick the shapes onto the roller. Let's see what happens if we just sort of begin a rolling. So I'm kind of inking this up as I am just going to lay that in there. Now I push it down. Oh, this one's really looking cool. Okay. Let's just see what happens if I roller this through. It's subtle. I like subtlety. Subtlety is nice. It gives a nice, it's an underlying pattern, which is good, like the, like the fold crease marks. There's beginning to be more than one underlying pattern. I'm just going to, I just put out some more of that nickel ink, and I'm just rolling around my stamp pad in it, or my rolling thing. Anyway, you see what I'm doing. Just picking up some of that ink and rolling back in. And as usual, there are 5,000 things you could do. Once you get started doing, playing with this kind of thing, you could use salt resist on it. You could put in stone paper. There's just, there's so many things, ways you could go with this. Just experimentation is, you know, that's really cool on the back. That's really cool on the back. It's funny, de definitely check the backs of things, but I think that's pretty beautiful on the front as well. So, um, this is a piece that I had made at another point in time, and I'm going to I'm going to just kind of run in here, run through the ink that's left over, and ink this up with another. I like the circle one. I like circles. And who doesn't like circles? It's not to like. Okay. Well, can I get some more ink out of here? I'm determined to. Okay. Ooh, yeah, that's nice, huh? That nickel ink is really... Oh, ooh, there's this beautiful pattern here now. There's a really nice pattern here. Let me see if I can pick any of it up. Okay. I'm going to really brayer here because I think the ink is getting somewhat dry. 
but let's see what I get up here. I could probably have activated it a little bit with some water, but let's see what happens. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Again, very subtle, but you could definitely go over this with some more media, and it would, and it's a really nice beginning. So, okay, I'm going to be back in a minute with, well, I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have out a needle and some embroidery thread, and I have a thumbtack. And I'm going to, and my journal, and I'm going to sew this paper. It's a little big, so I'm just going to tear it down. I love the torn edges as well of vellum. That's good. Actually, I like that, so that's good. And just tear it down there. And, um got an old mouse pad here. I'm just going to lay that underneath the journal page and you can use an awl for this but I just have a thumbtack and just go along and make holes. Uh, you could try sewing vellum with your machine. I It's kind of a brittle paper so it might tear more easily. And uh, once you get the holes punched in, I guess I want a knot here. And, oh, knots are, I, I like this quilter's knot. You lay the needle on the end of the thread, wrap it once, wrap it twice, catch it there in your index finger, and then holding the looped thread, just pull it down along the needle and right to the end. Okay. And then just so. Use a straight stitch or whatever stitch you want. Okay. Okay. Was that fun? I, I really enjoy making paper that way. And you can do a lot of different co kinds of paper that way. Um, I just thought it would be fun to have the vellum today as a different thing. And uh, here's the journal page. And I love to fold vellum. So, so try that. It seems so pristine to me that I needed to fold it or, you know, scrunch it in some way. It gives you those wonderful lines. And you can even fold this after and crease it and give it some more texture after you have um, treated it with inks. And, and certainly you can use any variety of media on top of the ink because it's it's so background. So you could definitely go into it with more. You could use gel pens on top of it if you wanted to do some writing. You could use markers. You could use acrylic paint. Anything. The sky's the limit. And um, that's it for today. I hope, I, I don't think I forgot anything. But if I did, I'll put it on my blog or something. This uh, video is also going to be available on my blog as a written tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it and have some fun with vellum and ink. Thanks. Bye.